First and foremost, big news this week. Hack, you mentioned it. The end of Bedlam is near. 2025, OU is set to head to the SEC. Oklahoma State is staying in the Big 12. This rivalry is over. Hack, thoughts on this specific rivalry in state, the only two big teams in the state of Oklahoma, but also just talk about rivalry games in general. Is this good for either school or is it probably the best as they kind of separate ways? Well, I mean, here's the thing. Like, I think this is the fourth standing uh, or the fourth longest continually played rivalry game in, in, in college football. Um, it, rivalry games to me are so valuable. It's, it's, it's kind of what makes college football. There's, we've all played in them. We've been a part of them in some, some fashion and there's something about them. Unfortunately, I think the direction with all this new conference realignment and expansion of college football playoff, and who knows, this is probably just the tip of the iceberg. You're going to lose a lot of these. And uh, the, the fan in me kind of wants there to be an effort to try to keep these alive, whether it's out of conference games. And we've talked about this too, you know, scheduling out of conference cupcake games or going out there and playing, uh, a, you know, a good football team early in the season. I think it's a creative way to, to keep these rivalries going, keep these rivalries stoked up, you know, similarly to, to, to Pitt and West Virginia early this year, it hasn't been played in a while, but those are games that need to be played. It's good for the community. It's good for the fan bases. It's good for the economy in the area. Um, so selfishly, it's a bummer. You know, I hope that, that maybe they figure it out. Um, these athletic departments figure it out a way to schedule it um, creatively um, as they navigate this landscape and an unknown territory that they're towing into. But, um, you know, yeah, I think it's just, it's just, it's a shame, but at the end of the day, you know, you got to go where the money is. And, and I think a lot of these kids understand that now, especially with, with them being involved in the business and, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Coach, you coached in this rivalry. I played in this rivalry, right? What what is give give our listeners a little insight into what Bedlam well, uh, is? You know, I got in, like I said, I got in trouble because I gave uh, Mike the the first toast, right? And I worked at at OU for like five years. Here's my take, right? Number one, no one ever thought Oklahoma would not play Nebraska ever, right? So when I grew up, I'm older than you guys. I'm damn near 60. So so when I was a kid, I watched Ohio State, Michigan. I'd watch Alabama, Auburn. And I'd watch Oklahoma and Nebraska. Guess what? Half those games don't even happen anymore, right? On a regular basis. So to me, to play Nebraska and do those things – is a big deal, one. Number two, uh, it's going to happen. It happened last week. They're figure they're they're, they're going to figure that out. But conference realignment is going to happen. So now what? Yeah, I'll tell you what. I I always thought this game and and when I was playing at OU, the Texas game as well. Those were our two big rivalries. And there's something about a rivalry game that just makes it more difficult, right? It's all the hoopla around, and especially when it's an in-state rivalry, man, it, the whole state seems like it comes together. You, you, you have a little bit of extra pep in your step during preparation that week, and, and anything can happen in a rivalry. Hack, you played in rivalry games, obviously, while you're at Penn State. Well, what's the preparation like going into a rivalry week especially against an in-state school that makes it different or harder. And, and again, kind of asking the question again, does Oklahoma benefit more from not having to play Oklahoma state anymore or vice versa? And I, I think we know the answer, but would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean um, you know, I think to answer your first question, the, the old adage, you know, every, every week's the same. We're going to approach each week the same, you know, want to know this week. I think that that's always one of the things that you hear consistently across, across programs. But I think that there is always that added pressure, the added visibility on campus. There's, there's blood ties to a lot of these things. So you're talking family members, you know, girlfriends, family members, there's a lot that goes into these things. Um, so you definitely feel that throughout the week. Um, there's obviously probably going to be a little bit more media attention. There's, there's, 
there's a lot of things that go into it that you that you really can't tune out. So, um, so let me let me ask you a question, Pat. So ahead, you're playing. You guys are playing Pitt, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. What's that? What's that week like? We're dropping our merch. We got to start calling Underwood Daddy Brad. But I'm a big yeah. odd guy. Breaking news, the Field of 68 has an online store, and it's your one-stop shop for the latest and greatest merch in college basketball and college football. You can find shirts to support your favorite team, make fun of your rival team, or boast Field of 68 catchphrases like Daddy Brad, Cussing and Discussing, and the Star Heels. Go to www.fieldof68.shop today and enter promo code TOUCHDOWN for 20% off at checkout. I, I mean... Like I said, Coach Franklin was very, you know, each week's the same. We're going to approach it the same way. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I know what the coach said, but yeah, player, like, no, as a player, I mean, like I said, as a player, you know, you're excited. Um, but I was also the same guy. Like I tried to, I tried to keep my schedule very regimented and very, you know, focused on the task at hand one day at time. Didn't matter who we were lining up against. We just had to go out and execute. Um, you know, when you get into the stadium, when you start feeling those things, that's when I think it really makes an impact. You're walking into the stadium, the bus ride in, all those things. There's there's a little bit more of an aura and an energy kind of flowing out of it. And you naturally feed off that. Adrenaline pumps into it and you naturally feed off that. But I, I tried to stay out of all that all that noise getting ready. Um at least personally. May have been different for so, other guys. <laughs> so I'll, I'll answer that same <laughs> question, Coach. This guy over here. I, yeah. I, I would approach the game the same way. That being said, there was something about rivalry games going to Stillwater or hosting them and then going down to the Cotton Bowl to play Texas where you could prepare as much as you possibly could, but when you step into that stadium and lock the gate behind you, it doesn't matter if you were a 25-point favorite or a two-point favorite. Anything could happen. Oh, 100%. And that's, and that's what I think is great about rivalry games. And, and for the state of Oklahoma, too, prior to the, the thunder coming to Oklahoma City in the NBA, it was Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, and that's it. And so it's going to be tough to see that leave. You see schools or states like Iowa, right? Iowa plays Iowa State every year. They're in different conferences, but they keep that together. I would have hoped they'd do something like that here. But with this – realignment you do see the the, the reemergence of texas versus texas a&m uh oklahoma versus a&m a&m you know because they went to a different conference now is a rival with lsu so new rivalries emerge you know the, the nebraska ou coach as you mentioned that went away but we kind of had it back this year it wasn't quite as exciting but i think that different um uh, rivalries emerge once we realign so um, sad to see it go, but we got a couple more years of it. And I think these guys are going to have a chip on their shoulder going into that game. What's going on, guys? Rob Doster here, the founder of the Field of 68 and the Field of 12 Media Networks. I wanted to take a quick minute to let you guys know about an exciting new project that we have been working on for the last three months. The Almanac, an all-encompassing preview of the 2022-23 college basketball season. We spoke with every single Division I head coach to give you a robust and accurate preview for all 363 Division I college basketball teams. We have predictions for conference finishes for all 32 leagues. We have features on the best freshmen, the best big men, the breakout stars, the coaches on the hot seat, so much more. It is 600,000 words of sheer happiness for the college basketball fan in your life. The Almanac is going to be available for digital purchase on September 26th for just $19.99, but you can pre-order it today using the promo code HOOPS and save 20%. Just hit the link in the description below.